The Department of Culture here in St. Kitts operates with the intention, quote, to utilize culture as a vehicle for generating awareness of the social, economic, and natural environment through protection, enhancement, preservation, and conservation, and to facilitate interaction towards achieving sustainability. And the department has been doing just that with its latest initiative, Culture Corner. To tell us about this, we are honored to welcome uh, Mr. Troy Mills, the Director of Culture, to the studio to talk with us. Welcome to Good Morning Again, Mr. Mills. Good morning. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. No, indeed. It's our pleasure to be having this discussion with you. So right off the bat, we want to know, how did the Culture Corner come about? Some may say culture is probably, and the Department of Culture, probably the best kept secret in St. Kitts and Nevis. So in an effort to market us, make us more visible, and make what we are doing here in St. Kitts, and there's a, a counterpart branch in Nevis, well, so we concentrate on saying it's to make what we are doing more visible to the public, educate them. A young lady, one of our workers, Miss Tashiella Millington, who is the assistant research and documentation unit specialist, she came up with that idea of sharing bits and pieces of information in small bites, so to speak, with the public doing it on a weekly basis. And we felt it was a tremendous idea. And she came up with the first few at this stage. I think she has about 15, 20 topics. So we've been doing it for about three weeks now. Last week is the fourth week. Mm -hmm. And she already has 16 topics for the next. I won't tell you what the next one is coming up. This week, I'll <laughs> no, keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were impressed with it. And we have been running with it. And we've been getting good reviews about it. All right, so where do we access it? On our social media, culture.gov.kn, as well as our TikTok, Facebook page, and the young people thing accordingly. But it's meant not just for the young people, but everybody gives us a reminder as well. And a lot of young persons may not necessarily know about things that we take mm -hmm. for granted in the past. So it's a means of letting them know what is happening, because if they don't know, one, we believe other cultures, as we're a multicultural country, will get into their psyche. So they are current. They wouldn't know what's happening with us. And our culture will really be dissolved in the first instance and lost in the second instance. Well, that means that you have a very important role at the, and the department as well. Definitely we do. And I, do, I should say that culture the simplest definition, the way of life of a people, is everything about us, the way we talk, the way we dress, the food we eat, how we behave even, our mannerisms, our language, our accents. And we at the Department of Culture, we deal with the intangible elements of it. And the St. Kitts National Trust, they deal with the tangible elements. Let me start with the last part. The tangible would be things like Independence Square, Brimstone Hill, things you can see, feel, and touch. If I were to ask about masquerade, where would that be classified? The clowns, folklore, food. Yeah. People may quickly say tangible because you can't physically touch a masquerade. You have a plate of food in your hand. But actually, they'll fall in the intangible realms because mm -hmm. it is the recipes and the documentation of the processes that go into creating these things. That is the intangible element of it. Oh, really important work indeed. There's a question that I have to ask you, but I'll wait <laughs> until Cortensi gets it. Okay, so you mentioned is Toshella? Toshella. Okay, so you mentioned Toshella is one of the instrumental persons mm -hmm. in this... Um, Culture corner. Who are the others? She's supported by the research and documentation unit, obviously. Miss Marlene Phillips is the specialist. Oh, yeah. Miss Jacqueline Harvey who is the Intangible Cultural Heritage Manager, mm -hmm. which is within the Department of the Audi. You know, she's also supportive. And uh, she, well, Tashiella wasn't feeling well, so I apologize for her not being here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm here as a result. I hope I could do as good a job as, as she would have done, as well as the Department of Culture, because we consider ourselves a little family closely knit, mm -hmm. and we bounce ideas around with each other. And yes, I like that, treat it a bit until we get a, something that we believe the public will be happy with. Good. All right, so the question that I have to ask you, perhaps it ties into Culture Corner as well. 
Uh, it seems to me that you are at that intersecting point between old culture and potentially <laughs> new culture. And I want to get the sense of exactly what the department's role is in either facilitating the development of new cultures while possibly holding on to the old things, or how do you see yourself? We see ourselves as doing both, actually. The research and documentation unit that is responsible for what it says. Mm -hmm. Research individuals, things, events, and documented ensuring we have the correct information. Mm -hmm. Because 50, 60, 100 years from now, when we're sitting in our rocking chairs, <laughs> our great great grandchildren mm -hmm. reading the history about St. Stevens will be seen, will be going on what mm -hmm. they see. So if it started incorrectly and was documented incorrectly, mm -hmm. then that will pose a challenge. Yeah. So it is our job to make sure these things are correct with the research. And of course, research isn't limited to just us sitting there and going on the PCs, etc. Persons interviewing persons, persons volunteering, or even if we were to say something, if I, for example, were to say something that's not correct here, we'll get a call to say, hey, Troy, you said this, but it's that. And we appreciate that because mm -hmm. we don't know all the facts and the information is out there. So we document that and it's important for the young people, the youth, the, the young generation to have that because if the traditions and practices are not passed on, then they will die a natural death. I always like to use the example of fungi and cornmeal, uh, sorry, cornmeal and fish, fungi and fish. Mm -hmm. If that tradition of making it isn't passed on to, well, like, I should have said the ladies, but now it's everybody because we have some greater cooks than the females. And I heard you boasting about females championing with the Toastmasters this morning. So if that, the way of making it isn't passed on, you find that 20, 30 years from now, petitions and divisions would not be able to make fungi and, and fish. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure the processes are correct, documented, mm -hmm. and available to the public. So I see you mentioning persons calling and correcting you, just using you as an example on history. Um, would that be one of the ways in which you choose who you put on the cultural corner because of their knowledge, or is there a vetted process that they have to go through before they get on the I did cultural corner? I did mention at this stage we have about 20 plus mm -hmm. topics already set. And uh, when the ideas came, we're trying to do male, female, if possible. To give you an idea, our first issue was about Dame Constance Mitchum, mm -hmm. the first female parliamentarian, and I guess mm -hmm. I'm boosting your issue <laughs> from this morning, first female parliamentarian in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. Our second issue was about the right, excellent Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, the late, who was the first national hero. Mm -hmm. Our third issue was about Kim Collins. Mm -hmm our first national to win a gold medal at the international level, world, the World Championships back in 2003. And our fourth edition is about a Miss Tyra Wilkinson. Now she's just 23 years, but she's making the list. Why? Because she's the first female from St. Kitts and Nevis to become a FIFA official, FIFA, the world mm -hmm. governing body for football. For football. Yeah. We have, and we have had official since about 1992. But she's also the youngest FIFA official in the world, if I'm not mistaken. And FIFA has probably a few thousand officials, males, females, in the football. And she's the youngest of 23 worldwide. So these little things we want people to know of now, mm -hmm. and 30, 40, 50 years, that will have changed. Mm -hmm. But they will know at that moment in time, that part of our history, this is something we could have been proud of. So you said the Culture Corner. Have you seen any benefits of this initiative thus far? It's only a few weeks old, started this month, and mm -hmm. I could That's boldly and proudly say yes. Quite a few persons are communicating with us. Hey, I didn't know that. This is news to me. Mm -hmm. And though things may have been out there, like Dame Constance Mitchum and the right excellent Robert Ratcher, and Kim Collins, of course, mm -hmm. some persons may have forgotten. And I am of the view, no matter how much marketing you do, you're mm -hmm. going to miss some people. Mm -hmm. And with the advent of social media now, the TikToks and the YouTubes <laughs> and the Facebooks and the Twitters and mm -hmm. what have you, mm -hmm. it provides a wider scope to share information. And you may be big on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I might be big on, I, I don't know, WhatsApp or YouTube. So 
using the various elements of it. We're hoping mm -hmm. to spread the word. And we have been getting very good commendation, one, for the program, edu educating, and two, persons who didn't know or didn't remember, they're now being reminded or being informed of what is happening. All right, so in terms of that feedback, is it just locally, or are you appealing to the diaspora as well? Because you're using technology, so obviously you're not limited to just St. and Nevis. Both. And we're particularly impressed with that coming from the diaspora, because we have non-nationals who are responding to it. Nationals who migrated or visiting over there, they are responding, but key, we, we share it with everyone, whether you're from St. Kitts or Nevis, within our contact. And Persons who may have been familiar with St. Kitts and Nevis, they're commenting, yes, I like the idea. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. This is the case, and they're amazed. And especially with the young lady at 23 years. And you see her, a simple young lady walking up 4th Street, and you're not going to be realizing, realizing she carries that much power, that much authority with her. And being on the FIFA list, she has another 22 years. Mm -hmm to go still in that area because at 45, that's the cutoff limit for FIFA. So we're very much pleased with the program. So tell us about your role as Director of Culture and I'm going to put two together. Why are you called BIF? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start with the, the second question. BIF, when we were in high school, we read a lot of books. Nancy Boy, famous Five Secret Seven, Nancy Drew, Etc. Hardy boys, pardon me. And we took names from this, the books that more reflected our personality. And there was a character called Biff Hooper. And uh, according to the book, he asked a lot of questions and he talked a bit. So somehow I was given that name. And for good or for bad, I'm the only one out of the, the bunch of us in first form who that name really stuck with. I said, for good or for bad. And the strange thing about it, I consider myself a little shy. But it goes against the grain of the, the big <laughs> yeah, yeah. in, in the series. So plus, I emphasize that because they are, that I know of, mm -hmm. at least three other Troy Mills is here in St. Kitts. Okay. And it so happened that I was in the hospital with one of them. And we were side by side in the emergency room. And quite a few ladies were coming in and asking for Troy Mills. And I thought, hey, boy, I'm good and popular. I couldn't recognize the voices. But then when they came, the faces, big smile, and they saw me, they drop. You're not Troy Mills. I say, yes, I am. But you're not the one. No, he's next door. So when they came, I just kept, without saying anything, just kept pointing. <laughs> just kept pointing. Uh -huh. So that is why I actually use Troy Biff Mills. Okay. And uh, at a financial institution, some monies were transferred to my account, some huge sums of monies, yeah. which should have gone to another Troy Mills. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the director being director of culture, I would say our staff is pretty small. Mm -hmm. Our research and documentation unit, three persons, we have a messenger secretary. And the technical area, I believe that is the area we could really do some beefing up with. Mm. Culture involves four arts, basically. Literary arts, visual arts, culinary arts, and the performing arts. Mm. And the Department of Culture, our technical expertise lie in the performing arts. We have a dance specialist, a drumming specialist. Mm -hmm. We have a music officer, a drumming officer. Obviously, we don't have any drama specialist, per se which we like to fill, but we don't have any officers in those other three areas which we hope to cover. So our main purpose right now is not only to keep the intangible elements going by the documentation, etc., but keeping it going through generations. And we have folklore program we have programs in the primary schools mm -hmm. and high schools. We have folklore programs in like and nine, ten primary schools sponsored by the Department of Culture. We do music, we do drumming, we do dancing mm -hmm. as well, both high school and primary school. And something we're extremely proud of. We started doing drumming and dancing in preschools. Mm -hmm. We were a bit apprehensive when you hear drumming in preschools, but then there's the adage, okay, bend the tree young. while it is young. And that is perhaps the best age to start bending and caressing yeah. and molding the tree. So we're proud of the drumming in that. But two key, two key areas in the Department of Culture, the ICH, Intangible Cultural Heritage, we are currently working on a policy. We were the first country in the English-speaking Caribbean to get approval for ICH program, which we did. It started 
in 2019 ended March, and it is sustained by the government costing over 250,000 US. UNESCO provided 100,000, which we are very grateful for, and the government, the other 150,000 in cash and kind, as well as the St. Kitts Nevis Creative Industry Registry, where we try to capture everyone in the creative and cultural industry, even the old lady selling sugar cake on the side of the corner, the side of the streets. Obviously, we are not going to get everybody, mm -hmm. but we are trying to get them so in the first instance we know who we have in the cultural sector. So you find we're going to do a program on how to make salary, but we're going to use persons who are registered with us. There might be a thousand one persons who can make salary, but those persons who are registered with us will get that opportunity. So folks, registration is important. Yes, and the beauty is there's no charge. It's free of well, cost. Well, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs>